This research is called the Marine Endangered Species. We collaborated with uh, UMT. The idea is to look at the population of marine mammals. So our focus is marine mammals, specifically dolphins. Around this place in 2010, there is quite a heavy tourism industry on marine mammals, on dolphins. But unfortunately, in the past few years, They've been saying that it's difficult to see the dolphins. They don't come nearer anymore. So, so we're here to see what the problem is. Two major things that we're trying to look at is we want to determine the population of the dolphins. There are two main types. One is the Indo-Pacific humpback, popular name is pink dolphins. The other one is uh, Irrawaddy dolphins. So what we do here is we go out. Uh, there are two teams. The UMT team does the transect survey. Whereas on my, on my side, we are more on the molecular genetic side, so we do DNA analysis. So what we do is whenever we spot a dolphin, we try as much as possible to not uh, scare it away. And then we try to get as close as possible so that we can actually get a biopsy skin sample. Uh, we use a gun for it and just a little bit of a tiny pinch of, of skin so that we can use it for DNA analysis. The second big thing that we are doing is environmental DNA. What is environmental DNA? If you see here in the water, there are fishes, there's prawns, there's everything inside here. And every organism will shed out its skin, you know, it will shed out the wastes. And if we collect the water and we filter out all the cells, we can get the DNA. And this DNA is a mixture of all the organisms inside here. What we're doing is that we are going to different locations. We've identified across about 40 kilometers. We looked at about 22 locations. We take the water and then we filter it. And then from the sample, the cells, we extract the DNA. We hope to be able to tell what species is within that. And eDNA is a method that is quite popular nowadays because it is very, well, I wouldn't say uh, cheap. It's not as cheap as the conventional way of, of doing uh, monitoring. The conventional way is you have to catch. You have to have a big net and catch whatever is in place. But, uh, but using eDNA, you don't have to do that. You just take a sample of water and then you do DNA sequencing and then you'll be able to get all the different species that's inside that region. There are many phases, eh? uh, so we've done this work in the Bay of Brunei with UMT. The work in Kuala Sepetang, we started in 2018 and uh, we, I think we've been here for every three months or so. Indeed, we have found the Irrawaddy dolphins and also the Indo-Pacific humpback. But uh, looking at the DNA, Two main indicators that we found quite alarming is that the variation is very low. What that means is that there are not that many individuals available. If you imagine COVID, you know, COVID, COVID, you know, some of us get very, very mild effects, but some of us doesn't have any effect. Some of us got, get, get hit very heavily. Why? Because there is variation. So the worry is that if the dolphin population is very low in, in variation, can be considered as threatening. You know, in, indeed, marine mammals within this area have been classified as, as threatened. Um, after threatened, you know, you, all the way it will be extinct. So we need to do something about it. We've also found that this is preliminary data we found that the ones that we got, the samples that we got, are females. So we don't know, is it just a behavioural difference? Why are we not seeing the males? Maybe they are more uh, cautious, they don't come to approach. But hopefully that is the case, but if the gender is not balanced, then we need to take action quite quickly in order to improve the health of the population of these dolphins.